About three years ago I posted a video on how to isolate the battery in a pair of cheap digital calipers and the main theme of most of the comments on that video are why would anybody even bother to do such a thing in the first place. Well I'm going to try to explain the usefulness of calipers and then I'll demonstrate the downside of the cheapest of the calipers which is why the batteries go flat. So a bit of a discussion about why calipers are so useful. These are probably the first calipers I ever bought maybe 40 years ago. They haven't got a name on them but they measure. They're down to about um, 0 0.05 of a millimetre vernier scale. I can't actually see those numbers anymore. I keep them in the desk just for curiosity of part sizes and things like that. Use what they have. And then about maybe, I don't know, 10 years ago, these types of calipers became readily available. Only about £10 in the UK. Easy to read. Perfectly adequate for most work. They're just a bit rough around the edges and they have one major fault as well. But those calipers are so cheap and so useful that you can have as many pairs as you like, keep them all over the place. This is a pair I've cut down and modified to isolate the battery so it doesn't go flat. And um, it's pocket size, take it to the store when you're buying hardware. And very recently, these are my new favourite calipers, plastic, even cheaper. I can carry these on planes, put them in the tool bag, put them in the carry-on luggage, take them anywhere. Things couldn't be better. Apart from the downside that the batteries go flat, which is what this is all about. Now if you're going to actually make stuff and you've got any concern about how accurate it's going to be, you do really want to have some quality brand measuring instruments. These are very smooth, very easy to use, very easy to turn on and off. They're just invisible to use and that's what you need in tooling. You don't want to be faffing with the tools to try and get them to work when you're trying to make stuff. And if you are serious about measuring things, you don't need just one tool. You need a selection. Sometimes you can't fit stuff in. And if you're very serious about measuring, get a quality brand of that type of measuring tool as well. Digital calipers are not a substitute for everything else. Different tools for different measurements and different quality of work. Now, some might say that all anybody needs to do to get over this problem of batteries going flat is to just take the battery out and put it somewhere. Well, yeah, that's the uh, battery cap there. That's lost. And then there's the battery kicking around somewhere. I don't know in six months time if that battery is still going to be there or if it's flat or whatever. And then the subject of boxes. Boxes only make things bigger. And if you're traveling or you're trying to organize a tool bag, you haven't got space for boxes and things like that. And those batteries in that box have been there for heaven knows how long. I've got no idea what condition they're in. So I'm going to make some power testing comparisons between that pair of cheap calipers and the Mitotoyos. Then I'll follow that with some Excel data logging and graphics to try and explain to people how those cheap calipers behave and why they drain their batteries so quickly. To provide a benchmark on quality calipers I'm using a Bluetooth multimeter and a phone app to data log the power current going into the calipers. So there's a 1.5 AA battery powering those calipers up through those hookup leads. 
the multimeter is measuring it and the smartphone there is logging the microamps that it's taking to power those calipers so when those calipers are first switched on they start to draw a current and that current tends to fluctuate between maybe one or two microamps and about seven or eight microamps so that electronics in the caliper is doing what it needs to do to measure where it is and display the measurement Now when I go to switch those calipers off, you'll see the micro amps drop down to one micro amp. So when those calipers are off, they don't power off entirely. They're still consuming one micro amp to keep its absolute position remembered. Turn them back on again and it will start fluctuating between seven or eight or one or two microamps that's the on current and then the off current again back down to one microamp displaying that data in Excel this is the initial on current this spike is the uh, calibration or the setting of the caliper when you first put the battery in this is the powered on current um, it's fluctuating but let's take a guess at it and say it's five microamps and when the meter toyos are switched off we get just one microamp Here we have the budget cheap calipers. They're powered up to the same 1.5 AA battery. As soon as the power is applied, the current consumption goes straight up to 21 microamps. Now you've got to watch the scale here on this smartphone app because it auto scales. It doesn't come down to zero on the Y axis. But that's pulling 21 microamps the display on the calipers is on and that's its on current bear in mind the mitotoyos are only pulling something like five now you go to switch these cheap calipers off and yes the current does go down but it only goes down to around 19 or 20 microamps check the y-axis on the chart on the left there that doesn't go down to zero it goes down to 19 put the calipers back on again a big spike and 21 sometimes creeping up to 22 so I kind of rescaled the chart there to show the um, true level of the current consumption against zero those calipers are pulling 21 or 20 microamps all the time whether they're switched on or whether they're switched off they are not ever switched off same data charting again on current something like 21 22 microamps the switched off current only going down to something like 19 or 20 microamps so they're always pulling out nearly as much power when they're off as when they're on putting the performance both on the same chart you can see that the Mitotoyos are only pulling one microamp when they're off whereas the cheap calipers are pulling 20 microamps 20 times more current than the branded ones to try and represent how long the battery charge might be expected to last I've picked a 
standard supply of SR44 battery. Now this is not even the cheap LR44s that um, a lot of people say they can just buy hundreds of. SR44s are reasonably expensive. You don't want to be buying more than necessary of those. And batteries don't drain in a straight line like I've represented, but it's reasonably straight. It's good enough for an illustration. Starting with a battery spec of 165 milliamp hours, those cheap calipers drawing something like 20 microamps, they will flatten that battery in less than 365 days, less than a year. So if you put those batteries in the cheap calipers and never turn them on, that battery will be flat within a year. The Mitsutoyos on the other hand, if you were to insert the battery, calibrate them, switch it off again and leave the calipers, that battery would last something like 7,000 days or 19 years, way beyond the shelf life of the battery. So the Mitsutoyos effectively have um, an infinite life on battery consumption, more than is practically necessary. Many people believe that these cheap calipers have an auto off function. So I've set the date logging sample rate to once every six seconds. The calipers are on. They're drawing their normal 22 microamps. And I left them like this for something like two hours. Now I'm speeding the film up here so that uh, people don't have to sit through this. But it is curious that after something like 100 sample rates or 6 minutes, the calipers do appear to switch off. So keeping your eye on the digital caliper display there, they, that display will go off. And there it is. But the current has only gone down to 20 microamps again. Yes, they've switched off, but they've switched off in their normal fashion. They haven't truly powered down. Now I left them like this for over two hours just to make sure something special wasn't going on. Here are the timestamps down on the x-axis, so maybe about 10.30 in the morning, followed through up until, I don't know, getting on for one o'clock in the afternoon. The first six minutes of power up, followed by the pseudo power down event, and then over two hours of battery drain. The final test here is on a variable power supply. So I'm going to reduce the voltage down powering those calipers. And as the voltage comes down, you can watch the measurement on the calipers change. And then when the voltage comes up again, it'll change again. Now notice there's no low battery warning in that caliper display. There's just a fading of the numbers. You might have to judge how much they've faded to try and judge how flat your battery is, but um, there is no warning. Mitotoyos have a low battery warning. They'll tell you the battery needs to be changed. Cheap calipers don't do that. You don't know how flat the battery is. You don't know if they're measuring accurately or not. Plotted in Excel again, you can see that 1.5, 1.6 volts. We're measuring 10.85 millimeters. Coming down to 1.4 volts, you're now measuring um, differently from where it was before. And you'll have no indication that the battery is causing that measurement error. Coming down to 1.3 volts, and it's questionable whether you'll notice that the battery's getting flat, and you've got quite significant errors creeping into the measurements. So all of that reasoning was why I thought of a way of isolating the battery so that you can have a very useful cheap tool, keep it handy, keep several pairs of them around, but they'll always be ready to use.